Let's have a look at Cardano again, ticker symbol ADA. We haven't looked at this for a while and I do think it makes a lot of sense to focus on the charts, to so not necessarily just look at the fundamentals because I don't think it's fundamentals that drives a almost 6,000% performance in 100 days and I don't think it's fundamentals that draws down the price by almost 98% in a year, right? These are psychological shifts. These are momentum shifts. People are simply scared when there's a bear market to lose money on the cryptocurrency. And so whatever is perceived as most risky gets sold off first. Meaning when there's a crypto winter, Bitcoin tends to lose less. When there's a rally, Bitcoin also tends to gain less, right? This outperformance that we got since the Corona crash, it was massive. So we gained almost 13,000% in those one and a half years in Cardano. Currently though, right, since we had the peak at three US dollars, we are down by more than 80%. Now, as said, the correlation across crypto is very high. Bitcoin and Ethereum has a lot of impact on the Cardano price as well. That's why I personally prefer to look at the Bitcoin or Ethereum denominated chart rather than at the pure US dollar chart. Because what's the reason why we invest in altcoins, right? Why don't we just stick with Bitcoin? It's because we hope to get a higher performance, meaning when investing into Cardano, we have to take Bitcoin as our minimum measuring stick. If we cannot outperform Bitcoin over the very long term, then why actually bother? Why take the additional risk of getting into Cardano? Over the long term, right? Over all of those years, ADA did outperform by almost 400%, but as said, with a lot of volatility along the way. Now, I've done a backtest on Cardano, trying to find out what's the best simple and exponential moving average. So I've simulated buying and selling. We buy whenever the price is above the moving average. We sell whenever the price is below. So we want to ride the momentum, right? We want to be in the market, betting on rising prices during times like this and vice versa. We want to be betting on falling prices when the Cardano price, right? The green line is below those moving averages. So for, for Cardano, the best moving averages are the 20 day simple and the 39 exponential. So that's what we see over here. In the short term, things continue to look bleak, right? We do want to see a rise of at least 10% or so until we can be bullish. We do get our fake outs, though, right? This is not by any means a perfect strategy. And sometimes those rallies can also be pretty much short lived, but still it's a good general gauge if it makes sense to rather go now bullish or bearish on an asset over the short term, it doesn't look that great. Now here is Cardano's relative valuation to Bitcoin. And I find it relatively interesting how there seems to be this very long-term trading range, as in when there's a lot of hype, a lot of development around Cardano, the price is pretty high and vice versa. And we did bottom out pretty much at ICO prices. And we also topped out pretty much to a similar relative valuation to Bitcoin in 2021. So this is pretty fascinating, right? Currently, the downside risk, so to speak, is 82%. The upside potential is 150%. Now, this doesn't look correct, right? How is it possible that this is just 80%, but the distance to the line is way larger than the distance to the upper line. That's because we're looking here at a logarithmic scale, right? When we look at this on a linear scale, this is actually how it looks like. What's also interesting to note here is that it's easier to buy low than it is to sell high. Note how much longer we are at the lower prices where you can dollar cost average in, where there's simply a lot of depression in the market versus those elevated prices, right? We are just for a few days or weeks maximum at these very high prices, which then tends to show that we really have to be active in selling during a rally, right? We can't really try to time the top because the top might be around just for a very brief period. We see something similar when valuing Cardano relative to Ethereum. Why do we want to look at this relative to Ethereum? Because the use cases are somewhat similar, right? We're looking at a smart contract platform. Cardano is pretty much a competitor to Ethereum. At least it attempts to do so. The adoption is not yet there, but it attempts to be challenging Ethereum. And in a similar way, we've got a sideways trading range with a bit less of a magnitude, right? Here, the bottom is at minus 50%. The top is at 123%. And by looking at this chart, we can see that Cardano tends to be higher correlated to Ethereum than to Bitcoin, right? With Bitcoin, we've got all these kinds of crazy 
bull runs and bear markets, the trading range is really, really large. That's different for Ethereum. So for Ethereum, it might even make sense to somewhat actively trade this. Right now, we are at no particularly extreme price for Cardano. Another way to look at this, right, we've got several charts here for Cardano, is to look at the Cardano dominance. So what we've got here now on the y-axis is a percentage value. How much of all of crypto is in Cardano? What's Cardano's market cap relative to the overall cryptocurrency market cap? And that's currently at 1.81%. Okay, at the top we have been at around 4.5% roughly. At the bottom, we've been at around 0.4%. Now, we could write all kinds of interesting comparisons here, right? We could take the last crypto winter and just overlay this and be super pessimistic. Nobody knows if history will repeat itself one-on-one -on -one compared to 2018. The stage of development of Cardano today is very different to 2018. Also, people tend to sell off altcoins less in this bear market than in 2018. Another interesting chart, also pretty much a similar shape, is the Cardano price relative to Total 3. Now what's Total 3? Total 3 is cryptocurrency's market cap minus Bitcoin's market cap and minus Ethereum's market cap. So we are looking at Cardano within the altcoin market. How is Cardano relatively to other altcoins performing? We've got our three tops here as well. And we simply have to note here, right? You have to be okay with the long-term volatility, right? Something similar to the crypto winter cannot be completely excluded. So if you're long-term bullish on Cardano, you should be okay to continue to buy even if we are depressed and everybody has given up. Because only if you're okay to continue to buy, right? Let's say we are at a similar time to the middle of 2018 and you are okay to hold through this relative drop of another 70%. Only if you're okay to continue to buy when everybody has given up in these low levels, that's then where you can get this massive outperformance in this case here versus Bitcoin. So this needs to be the roadmap, right? If you're a long-term bull on Cardano, don't just buy during elevated prices, have enough of a conviction to ride the way all the way down and continue buying then. If you don't have that conviction, then simply just try to ride the waves, right? Try to ride the momentum, maybe trade according to those backtested moving averages. Then you can save yourself potentially from some pain if you are overinvested. Now we've got a lot of comparison charts here as well versus BNB, Tron, Avalanche, Solana, Polygon Matic and Phantom. Before we go into those charts, it would be very much appreciated if you gave this video a like because it will help the channel grow. And of course, you also might consider subscribing. I publish videos regularly. Now let's look at Cardano to other layer one competitors, to other smart contract competitors. How is Cardano doing there? This is Cardano versus BNB, right? And BNB had a really, really nice run and it has all this adoption. A lot of decentralized applications are being built on BNB and they are being used. So of course Cardano is comparatively cheap versus BNB. What I find interesting is that the bottom here again happened pretty much at a similar level, which would indicate that the potential risk versus reward might not be too bad for Cardano versus BNB. But those two investments, they are somewhat different in their risk profile, right? I would argue BNB is a bit less risky given it is already quite established. This Cardano versus Tron. Tron is having a bad time recently. There's a lot of FUD around USDD, justified or not. This is the only chart so far that doesn't really have a consistent trading range. It's pretty hard to get to any conclusive trend here. We might be appreciating versus Tron over the long term and we might be relatively low, but this is to be taken with quite a bit of a grain of salt, right? It's pretty hard to do any kind of conclusive TA on this. Let's look at Cardano versus Avalanche. A little bit different over here, right? Here we went below the support by quite a bit, actually. This was a drop of another 40%. There is somewhat of a resistance though now, right? So no clear picture here, pretty much in the middle of all of the action. Both Avalanche and Cardano lost quite heavily in this recent drop. Cardano underperformed Solana since August of 2020 by 70%. Solana is also rather having a bad time right now. The outages, etc. don't help the salt price. This is just the historical view though, so 
I would not really have a clear preference just based on TA. But given that the trading ranges are that different, right? This is a 96% underperformance within this year. Given that the ranges are so extended, the correlation between Solana and Cardano seems to be relatively low. So when constructing a portfolio, you exactly want this, right? You want to have assets that have low correlation to one another, that when one asset goes up, the other tends to go down and vice versa. So that when you're bullish on both assets, that you can hold them both and you can reduce your overall portfolio volatility, right? Canceling the price movements out between different crypto assets. That's what you want when you have a portfolio. You don't want all your assets to move in the same direction at the same time. And this seems not to be the case for Cardano. So Cardano versus Solana tends to be relatively lowly correlated given the large swings across those assets. This is ADA versus Matic. Matic is doing very nicely recently. That's why we see this crash. I am long-term bullish on Polygon Matic. The transaction fees are really, really low. The adoption is relatively nice. The closeness to Ethereum isn't bad either. There is some support from the Ethereum community there. You've also got NFTs on Polygon Matic that are more or less well established. We've even got support on OpenSea for Matic related NFTs. All of this nice performance of Polygon Matic probably explains the underperformance of Cardano versus Matic over the long term, right? This is a 95% underperformance. I wouldn't bet the farm on this that Cardano will continue to outperform or rather underperform Matic to that degree in the future, but I am a Polygon Matic bull over the long term. I do think Polygon Matic is a great project and it does make sense to DCA into Matic. Trying to write these short term reversals can be dangerous. This is simply just the comparison chart. So if you hold Cardano over the long term, try to also have a look at Polygon Matic. It might be worth checking out. The risk profile, in my opinion, might even be lower for Polygon Matic given its adoption. Here's Cardano versus Phantom. And here we've got pretty much a trading range again. We did see a little bit of an underperformance. The risk profile of Phantom and Cardano is quite different though. I personally think that Phantom tends to be more risky because it is very centralized. We do have a bit of adoption, right? It's EVM compatible as well. So you can use Phantom using MetaMask. You can use all those decentralized applications. Still, I would be somewhat cautious with Phantom now in this bear market. There's definitely a lot of inherent leverage in Phantom, a lot of risk. And this seems to also be helping Cardano right now, right? The recent performance since beginning of the year is positive versus Phantom. So this is Cardano divided by the Phantom price. If you're interested in daily market updates around Bitcoin, Ethereum, or various altcoins, if you want me to analyze your specific altcoin, then feel free to check out the bitcoinstrade.com. The link is in the video description. There's a script that you can add to TradingView to get the best back-tested simple and exponential moving average for various assets. There's a lot of exclusive content, many, many videos, and of course, the Telegram channels where you can ask me anything. So thebitcoinsradio.com, more information is in this video over here. Hope to see you in that video and thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.